Katie. That sounds amazing. Welcome to Discover Double Bass. If you're watching at home, this is the wonderful Katie Thoreau, and we're here to talk about her podcast, The Hump with Katie Thoreau, where she meets many of the double bass world's finest players, and that is the theme tune. I just love it so much, Katie. I wanted to hear you play it. And uh, yeah, it sounds awesome. First of all, welcome. It's great to have you with us. Thank you, Jeff. Well, we've been here filming lessons for Discover Double Bass all week, and we've got a little bit of extra time. So let's talk about the podcast. First of all, how long has it been going for? What was the impetus behind getting going with uh, The Hunt with Katie Thoreau? Yeah, so I started it in September of 2020. And the idea was before the pandemic, I wanted to, because I get to travel internationally, I'm very lucky. And I thought, oh, if I'm in Paris, let me interview a bass player there and bring a microphone along or Berlin, wherever. And then of course I couldn't do that during the pandemic. So I thought, okay, let's use the internet. And I just kind of wrote kind of my dream list of people. And right off the bat, I, you know, I had Christian McBride and John Goldsby and Larry Grenadier, Scott Colley, like pretty quickly. Um, so that's why I wanted to do it just because I'm, I'm kind of a bass nerd. So just to learn more about other people. And how, have, how has the experience been? What are the, some of the, who are some of the people that really uh, jumped out in the early days that you enjoy speaking with? I would say definitely Christian McBride because was that number two? Or yeah, it was like number two. Yeah. yeah, and I was I was really glad that he like right away, and it was cool because he's like, well, his assistant was like, okay, he's got forty minutes on this day, and it has to cut right there. So, I tried to get in all of my questions. So that one definitely stood out. Uh, Larry Grenadier, Scott Colley too, because I didn't really know much about his upbringing. I didn't really know that he really grew up in L.A. Um, there's been a lot of really fun ones. Yeah, and if, I mean, I'm trying to think about some of the uh, David Wong we were talking mm -hmm. about earlier, uh, Ed, uh, Edwin Livingston, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, David Allen Moore, Danny Zeman, uh, a lot of absolutely um, incredible players. And uh, is it a weekly thing then? Are you kind of going live and, or are you, is it live or is it pre-recorded, isn't it? It's pre-recorded. Mm. I, I liked the idea of it being live, but then I thought, oh, there might be too many tech issues. So. Yeah. Um, I, I was on a little of a hiatus right now because I got a little overloaded after the pandemic or we're, we're still kind of in there uh, with a lot of other things coming up. So it was too much to do it every week. But normally I would release them every Wednesday. And yeah. that's uh, the title has a, maybe a triple meaning. It's um, yeah, hump on. day, you know, so that's Wednesday. Uh, the hump, uh, like the bass has, you know, humps, yeah. like visual humps. And then a lot of us refer to like a bass, like a walking bass line or a groove as someone mm. like a hump, like, oh, he or she has a really great hump. Right, cool. Yeah. I like it. And what are the uh, what are the kind of response that you've had from people? Because it's been really cool to see the podcast grow and uh, develop. Have you, um, yeah, what, are, what have you heard from the bass world in reaction to what you've been doing? I've heard great things from the bass world, which, which I'm happy about because it's, I thought, oh, this will just be fun for me to learn stuff. But, you know, a lot of people like it, especially you mentioned David Wong. There's not a lot of info out there about him. And he's like one of my favorite bass players out yeah. there today, especially his two feel. So I think a lot of people appreciate that information. And my goal, I mean, kind of like you, like you're really great at letting people just talk and, you know, kind of getting answers out of them and, and inspiring them to tell stories. Uh, so there's been a response from the bass world, other musicians. And also, like, I, would, I don't say normal people, but non-musical people who civilians. just... Civilians. Yeah, civilians who are just like, wow, I, I didn't... Even, maybe they don't even know jazz or classical music, but they kind of, like, fell upon this podcast. It was suggested on Spotify or iTunes. And they go, oh, wow, I did... Hey, I'm learning about jazz and the bass. And so it's kind of opening up uh, to another world as well. And uh, I'm just trying to think of uh, some of the other uh, players that I've enjoyed, because you're not just doing jazz bass. You have classical artists. I really liked the, uh, uh, the episode with Nina de Caesar. Mm -hmm. um, are there were some other cl classical bassists that kind of jump out that you, we've had? Obviously, David Allen Moore. Um, who else have you had on there? I've, yeah, I've had... Um yeah, you're putting him on the spot. Now I'm forgetting. But um, we had Xavier Foley. Oh, Xavier we had, Foley. We had Joseph Conyers. Yeah, Nina oh. D'Souza was great. Phoebe Russell. Oh, wow. Yeah. Phoebe is cool. Yeah, so it's been fun for me to learn about these people again. I mean, the internet's great. And the pandemic, in a lot of ways, was not so great. But this was a really cool outcome from it. So I get to meet people in a way that I wouldn't have before. And also, bass players, you know, we're always working. So you never meet each other. You never, like, bump into each other on a gig. Like, it just never happens. So it's been fun that way. And I've also uh, done some non-bass players. So I had a um, really great saxophone player, Walter Smith. Uh, some people just in the industry, I had the um, vice president of Quincy Jones, Adam Fell, who just started the NFT one of. So it's like a really cool crossover. It's been a lot of fun for me. 
And uh, I was thinking we should give a shout out to our other podcasting friend in the base world, Jason Heath. Has, has he appeared mm -hmm. on the podcast? He has. He was yes. there pretty early too. Yeah. Yeah, he, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, he's a great guy. And of course, Contrabass Conversations, make sure people are subscribed uh, to that. And uh, listen, I was hoping we could wrap up by, I love your theme tune. I'd say it's the <laughs> coolest theme tune in the uh, double bass, uh, you know, online world. So yeah, talk us through it. Maybe we could hear a few of the little licks. I love the line at the end, but maybe start at the beginning. Let's have a let's hear hear how well, it goes. Well, I'll and... tell you how it came about. Yeah, I'm a. Um, I used to. I'm doing it again, but I used to really grind my teeth at night, and I didn't know. Of course, you don't really know you're doing it until. I mean, I wake up with my mouth is all sore. Yeah. And so and then I just got this idea for like this like grinding tempo and yeah. blues. So that was the idea, and I didn't notice I was grinding my teeth until one morning. I was kind of lying awake and I was like, what's that sound? And it was me, just like chomping away. So I just thought, gee, is a nice key for the blues. And it's, um, it's also a 16 bar blues. Yeah. So, and I can't, there was a, a, I remember I heard Ray Brown wrote a blues in 16 bars. And it was one of those moments as a kid, I'm like, well, I didn't know you could write a blues that wasn't 12 bars. Is any other one I can think of, is, is it Watermelon Man is about the only other one? Maybe, yeah, think yeah. Of? Uh, that, is that a, the, that's the Herbie Hancock one, isn't yeah, it? It's yeah, yeah. Yeah, anyway, it's, there's not many. Yeah, so um, I just... Yeah, let's... let's I kind of wanted to make it as uh, grinding as possible, so yeah. just... I was like, oh, that's yeah. enough. Like, And then then go to the four chord, same thing. <laughs> Sorry, I do... And kind of let the notes ring yeah. on that. Um, so lots of slides. And I love going to the sixth chord, having those things ring, and instead of just ending the blues, there's the extra four bars. Um, so I just went to the flat three. So the, the line just goes duh, just goes down in half steps until it ends. So it just kind of repeats. And that last line it's just kind of like a bluesy thing, but you got to put a little oomph into it. If I didn't, yeah. it'd just be, uh, I'll see if I can not do it. You know, just be a little wimpy. So yeah. just, whenever I do like a, a slur, it always helps if I kind of sing it, because I'll use my stomach. The yeah. Yeah, it kind of helps that way. I absolutely love it. And that descending line, is it kind of root going up to the third and chromatic? Yeah, way? yeah, kind of like, um, all right, sorry. Yeah, flat three. And the next one goes... Uh, yeah, no, I'm forgetting. Yeah, so it is just descending. And then uh, A flat. And that's it. It's really cool. Yeah. Sounds great. Thank you so much for sharing that. And you know, best of luck for the podcast. Is there any uh, anything you're excited about going forward? Any uh, potential guests, or we, is it still kind of under wraps at the minute? Who's coming up? Well, I kind of want to not expand, but interview yeah. some musicians who played with great bass players. Like I, I love um, this drummer Matt Wilson, and he played with Charlie Hayden for a really long time. So I think it's fun to talk to people who played with really great bass players. I know. I interviewed a clarinetist, Ken Poplowski, and he did a lot of playing with Milt Hinton. And it's like to find someone who played with him is a little bit rarer nowadays. So it's kind of like finding that lineage of people who played with really amazing bass players. Yeah, well, I love the way that you're exploring the jazz tradition, but you're also looking forward to the incredible bass players that we've got on the scene. So, Katie, thanks so much for joining me. Make sure you go and check out Katie's podcast, The Hub with Katie Dwork.